hello guys how are you welcome back to your own youtube channel arls updates and uh, recent exams for more updates related to our recent arls exam writing task topics listening reading practice tasks on daily basis subscribe for more videos for every day listening practice task join today to achieve your dream score Please hit the like and subscribe button, press the bell icon for the upcoming notifications. Don't forget like, subscribe and share my YouTube channel and my Facebook page as updates and recent exams. Now look at part 1. You'll hear a student asking for advice on her accommodation. First you have some time to look at questions 1 to 6. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen, because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions 1 to 6. Good morning. So, what can I do for you? Well, it's about the accommodation where I'm staying at the moment. First, can you give me your name and address, please? Yes. I'm Maria Dominguez, and the address is 12 Pine Tree Terrace. It's in Westcliff. I'm staying with two other students. There's actually four of us in the house, us three students and the lady who rents the house to us. So, is there a problem? Well, there are a few, actually. You know, I'm a first-year student, and though I lived away from home for a while when I was studying over the summer in Mexico City, I've never lived abroad, and it's a big change for me. The course is tough, but that's not the main difficulty. I'm coping with that up till now, anyway. The accommodation was arranged for you by our office, wasn't it? It's a nice place by the sea. Okay, but it's difficult. There are only a few buses, and it takes about 50 minutes. It's just so far away, and there's no way I can get back if I want to stay on after 7. And also the other thing is, there's nothing to do there. It's basically just a village. All my friends stay on campus. What about the girls you live with? Do you get on with them? Well, when I see them, but one of them is hardly ever there. Mostly she stays in a house with friends. They've got plenty of extra space, you see. The other girl is quiet as a mouse and hardly ever leaves her room. The landlady's friendly enough, though a bit forgetful, and she doesn't keep the place very clean. I don't have any real problem with her as a person, though. I understand it's rather far away. So I suppose you'd like us to find you a place in the halls of residence or closer by in the town. That would be good. You did say in your brochure that most first-year students are offered a place in halls. I think it actually said final-year students have priority there. They need the library facilities more for studying for their finals. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 7 to 10. Now listen and answer questions 7 to 10. Anyway, let's see what we can do. Just a moment, I'll check what might be free. Sometimes students drop out or move from halls, though we were full at the beginning of term. By the way, have you checked the student notice boards? You know there's one in each of the four colleges, don't you? There are often requests for people to share houses, and it can be quite cheap. No, I hadn't thought of that, 
but it's a bit of a risk living with complete strangers. Now, I see there's a room free in Hillside College. That's the one with the tall tower, right? That's it. It's the smallest college and has a reputation for being quite fun. Oh, but it's a shared room. Would you consider that? That's going to be a problem for studying, isn't it? What if she plays music all the time and maybe we won't have anything in common? Maria, I see you studying history. So is this girl, Francesca. She's Italian. Well, at the moment I'm doing the general humanities course, which includes history, but actually I'm planning to change to literature quite soon. That's not the thing, though. I really want a room on my own. Right. I'm afraid I don't see any other openings. There's nothing showing up on the computer, at least on campus. Well, if I have to stay where I am now, I'm going to find it more and more depressing. Here's one more thing we can try. The university owns several places on the Thanet Road and also by the West train station. Both of these are about a 20-minute walk down the hill. They're not the newest of buildings, but I could check for you. Can you come back tomorrow? Oh, no, that's Saturday. What about Monday? Yes, sure. I'd really appreciate it if you could do something for me. Let's hope so. That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part two. Part two. You will hear a student union officer explaining about the union's functions and services to a group of new university students. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 15. Now listen carefully and answer questions 11 to 15. Hello everyone. Now, here you all are, new university students. And the first question you probably have is, what is a student union? Another question is, do I have to join? Well, regarding this second question, let me say that membership used to be compulsory in the past, but that did cause some controversy, particularly from students who wanted to remain free and unaffiliated, and this university responded. So, joining up is no longer compulsory. It's totally up to you, although I'll admit there is a fairly strong obligation to join, since all students benefit from the large variety of services that we offer. We do understand, however, that many might be unwilling to join because of a supposed political slant to the union. Traditionally, student unions have been seen as being dominated by the left, and I suppose that's still true to a large extent. Here, however, at this university, our union discourages such one-sided viewpoints, and students across the whole political spectrum are welcome. Thus, if you feel that you are a conservative type, in other words, leaning to the right, you are particularly urged to join to provide a more balanced representation. Now, let me move back to the first question. What are we? We are a formal organisation, but totally independent of the educational body. We make our own rules, rent our own premises and organise ourselves as we wish. And our mission is basically to help you. For example, 
Do you remember how you all arrived in late February to have an orientation week? That gave you an invaluable induction into life here, right? Well, the student union organized all the festivities at the end of that. The barbecues, partying and drinking, and even the musical entertainment as well. We'll do that again on occasions, and as always, those events take place on the football ground. Now, do you have any questions before I move on? Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 16 to 20. Now listen and answer questions 16 to 20. Now, let me tell you more about the Student Union and its basic functions. In general, there are three, social, organisational and representational. Let's look at the first one. Basically, the Union provides many social outlets for you to relax and have a better life at university. If you go to our Union office, you'll find a list of the many clubs and societies we have, where you can make many friends with people who share a common interest. So, after class, sit with them in the cafeteria and discuss whatever takes your fancy. We also maintain sporting facilities and even our own gym, allowing you to relieve some of that pressure and worry after a particularly hard session in the classroom. And we have some small shops and other places where you can buy clothes and sporting gear, in other words, some retail outlets. And if you flash your student union card, you'll get up to 20% discount at the bookshop. But unfortunately, there are no discounts at the union cafeteria. Sorry, no cheap cappuccinos. Finally, there's a student union newspaper and you're welcome to contribute or put in advertisements if you're buying and selling goods or textbooks. You can also place notices of a more personal nature on the notice board of the union office itself. All right, let's move on to our more serious functions, which are helping you get through life here, as well as representing you in times of trouble. Regarding the second issue, if you have a problem or a grievance, or if you feel under pressure or depressed for reasons both inside and outside the university, for example, perhaps a dispute with your landlord or the people in your local gym, then come to us. We have a range of counsellors and helpers, and even some lawyers, who you can meet in the conference room. So, just sip a cup of tea or coffee with them and tell them your troubles, and they'll be all ears. Basically, there's every reason to join the student union, since whatever you need, whether it be social or representational, we will help you. That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part three. Part three. You will hear a discussion between a student, Aldo, and his supervisor, Dr. Hurst, about his research assignment. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 23. Now listen to the first part of the conversation and answer questions 21 to 23. 
So, Aldo, how's it going so far with your assignment? Not too bad. You're looking at the community round here? That's right. How people perceive the community they are in. Have you made much progress? Hmm. I conducted quite a lot of interviews on the street with local residents. Their responses are interesting. I haven't got quite as many yet as I'd like. I had wondered if I'd have language problems, particularly with the different accents. I seem to have managed, though. Having to work in the open has made it harder, and with the cold weather there's been recently, people don't necessarily want to stop and talk like they do if it's nice and sunny. That's something I've had to deal with. Of course, some people are too busy to stop and talk, but that's OK. I see. So, have you formed a good overall picture of how people view the community? To an extent. I've certainly talked to plenty of older people. I guess they may have more time to talk. I still don't really have enough young mothers, though. I've managed to get enough older mothers and children through the schools. That's something I had been worried about. Well, that shouldn't be too hard. Now, how are you going to deal with all the data you've collected? That's the difficult part. I guess I need to run some analyses, but I'm rather unclear about what methods to use. You've told me you're confident about using computers, so you just need some input on choosing programmes. You should attend a statistics seminar. They're held every Friday after the methodology seminars in room 105. That should help you to select an approach. Oh, good. I'll do that. Now you have some time to look at questions 24 to 30. Meanwhile, let's hear something about what you've learned. Yes, I talked to a number of residents. Good. I imagine they didn't always have the same opinions. Views were certainly quite mixed. Take sports facilities. In general, people seem to think they weren't very good. There's no swimming pool in the area, for example. But at the same time, there's a new football training area. It looks very smart to me, but it doesn't seem to get used very much. People seem to prefer sitting around in the parks. They enjoy that, taking picnics and so on. Although they want the council to be more efficient at cleaning, there's a lot of litter. People are obviously very concerned about their children's learning. The general view seems to be that early schooling at primary level is of a good standard in the area, but that this standard declines as children move up through the system. The colleges were criticised in particular. OK. Now, are you going to collect any more data? Some, I hope. There's a local festival next week, and I think the events there will give me some useful opportunities. I talked to a council officer about it all. Good. What does it involve? First, there's a dance show, which I'm sure I'll enjoy. The council explained that the concert hall's being renovated and won't be ready in time, so it's being held in the main square, which I think will be better anyway. At least I'll have more space to wander around in. True. And so I hope to be able to carefully watch the age groups that are there in the audience and make notes about how they interact. So that's one event. Then, the following day, there's another interesting event which I look forward to going along to, and that's a cookery competition. Oh, yes. Interesting. I think so. Yes, that one's being organised in the town hall, which has a big space, apparently. With food and cooking from all the different people in the area, the council officer told me that it'll be a good chance to find out about the different cultures that make up the community. Sounds promising. Then there's one more event I'd like to go along to. The council officer promised me that the courses fair will be interesting. It's going to be in the Langtree Theatre, and the officer said lots of teachers will be there. I've already talked to plenty of them, but he advised me to put some questions to the head of education, who will also be there. That's all very useful. OK, I suggest you come back next...
That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part four. Part four. You are going to hear a conversation between two students about studying abroad. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. Hey Mary, how's school going? Haven't seen you in a while. What have you been up to? John, good to see you again. I've been really busy the last couple of weeks. I'm applying to study abroad next year. Really? So am I. I think it will be a great experience to be able to study in another country. What country do you want to go to? At first I wanted to study in Africa, but my parents really don't want me to go there because they think it will be dangerous. So now I'm thinking about going to Spain, Italy or Japan. Actually, I think Africa would be a fascinating place. I would want to go there to visit. Maybe not to study, but definitely I would want to go visit. For next year, I want to go to either China or Germany to study, but my parents can't afford any European countries, so maybe... Why China or Germany? Well, I want to go to China because I think it's a really interesting country with a long history. Plus, it has been changing so much, and I think it is a great time to be there. I really want to improve my Chinese also, and I've been taking Mandarin courses the last two semesters. I would want to go to Germany because my mother is German, and I want to learn more about my cultural background. How about you? Why the countries you chose? Well, I want to go to a Spanish-speaking country. I took Spanish in high school, so I figure if I go to a Spanish-speaking country, I'll be better off knowing some of the language already. But I have already been to Mexico many times, and South American countries don't have classes for my major, except for Brazil, but they mostly speak Portuguese there. I would want to go to Italy because I want to do a study about ancient Roman civilization. It has always been a dream of mine to go and see Pompeii and the volcanic ruins. Plus, my family has Italian roots and I love Italian food. I want to go to Japan mainly because my girlfriend was born in Japan and always tells me all of these fascinating stories about Japanese history and culture. I am a big fan of sumo wrestling also. So I've always wanted to see a sumo match in person. I really love sushi and almost all Japanese food. Recently, I have started to watch some Japanese baseball too. But of course, these are all secondary reasons. My main reason is of course my girlfriend and understanding her culture. I don't speak any Japanese though, so that is my major drawback. I think it is much better to go to a country if you can speak the language. That's great. When do you have to decide by? I have to finish all my applications this week. I'm really stressed trying to finish everything, on top of all my schoolwork. I'm almost done with my applications. I just have to finish the Italy application. I think my last choice is Italy, so I'm doing that one last. How long do you want to go for? I think I'm only going to go abroad for one semester, or else I won't be able to graduate on time. I have many classes left until I can finish my degree, and I'm not sure if I will be able to take them studying out of the country. 
I think I might be able to study in Spain because my Spanish is fluent, but definitely not in Italy or Japan, unless they have classes offered in English. I want to go for a year. I've heard that it's better to go for a year because you get a full experience and get a better grasp on the language. But I understand that most people can't finish their degree in time. It was hard trying to decide which country I would rather go to, but I think my first choice is to go to China. I know Germany will be great also. Either way, I will be thrilled to have the opportunity to study there. What's your first choice? I really don't have one. Actually, I think I'm like you. Just being able to study in another country will be great. Either Japan or Spain will be awesome. Italy will be awesome too. But I've been there a bunch of times, so I think I prefer to go somewhere else. Sounds exciting. We'll have to go to class now. It was great talking to you again. See you around next time? Yeah, sure. See you around. Hope that everything goes well. That is the end of part four. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Thanks for listening and God bless you all. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share my YouTube channel and my Facebook page. I'll update our recent exam. For everyday listening practice test, for more material visit my website www.altsupdatesandrecentexams.com The link is also given below in the description. Please write your score below the comment section. And please like and subscribe my channel for more hours listening practice tests on daily basis. Again, thanks for listening. God bless you all.